tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Started with animation. Today I want to talk about Mesh, Create Mesh Network and the Option Box. Basically about these two points here, the en entries here. Geometry type either Mesh or Instancer. And it's a big difference really and in some cases the Instancer is the way to go to, although the default is Mesh and uh, the several tutorials are made about Mesh always use the default settings but there's there can be reasons for using the Instancer option. So we have it at the default settings with Mesh and we create a Mesh network. Uh, let's go to Polygon Modeling and create that sphere. Let's give it a new material an Arnold Standard Surface Shader. We need to click here in order to see the shading and let's map this with a grid right here. So that's a polygon object. Now let's create an arc. Uh, an arc is this thing here. And uh, let's go to the front window for example and um, create that arc like this. Enter. So we have like a, this, this kind of structure here. Now when we create a mesh network from both of them, so we can use both of them in the mesh network world, uh, we go to either create mesh network or to the tab here, mesh and create mesh network. What it does, it uh, moves the sphere to the center of the scene and it just ignores the curve. Now we're back here we have um, these objects here. Um, I want to constrain actually bind the two objects to each other and actually introduce a third one which is not in the polygon world that means it's not mashable because mash wants not curves not NURB surfaces it wants polygon uh, surfaces like this here. But let's go to the surfaces here and create a torus for example. Like this. So we have three objects in the scene now. I select the objects and I press Control G to in order to group them. So this is a group here which I want to convert into a mesh network now. Okay as we've seen before in the default settings only this object will be transferred into the mesh world. Let's try this. Mesh, create mesh network. You see? Let's undo this. We've selected the three objects now and now we go to mesh, create mesh network and use the option box and go to the instancer. And the instancer is much less critical about what you've chosen as the input for the mesh network. You'll see this in a second. Let's apply this. Reset the settings for the next start. And here you have the interesting structure now. And uh, when you apply signal node now, they all jump around like this. The curves, the NURBS torus and the polygon spheres. Let's undo this and carry it a little bit further. So I've selected the three of them and now I go to FX here. I'm already there anyway in order to see the, that mesh entry here. And I go to Constraints and um, actually I go to Fields and Solvers because here I have different kinds of constraints and for example the hinge constraint or the spring constraint. Let's try the hinge. The hinge sits in the middle of the three objects and it currently does not do anything but uh, we can for example animate the sphere with a field 
for example, turbulence. Let's create that turbulence field, set the magnitude to 5, which is a default, and the attenuation to 0, so the field's influence is the same everywhere in the scene. And now they start moving. They have a hinge constraint, so they have to kind of rotate around that hinge here. When I um, increase the magnitude here to 20, for example, the motion will be much more drastic. And I extend the frame range here to 1000 in order to see what's happening. Now let's convert this group into a mesh network again with the instances. Now this is what I get. I have the animation with a hinge constraint. All three objects are involved and replicated several times now. 10 times in fact, and the turbulence field working on the, on the objects. Can we use a signal node now for our mesh network? So let's select it, it's all here, and create a signal node. So we have a mixture between the two animations now. The signal makes this up and down motion in the default settings, of course you can change that all, and uh, the turbulence field is working in, in the group mode, in, in the original. I've changed the background color and uh, I'll just show you uh, something about the distribution now, uh, which is one of the main powers of mash really number of points is currently 10 uh, and we have them in a linear fashion let's use the grid now so we have three by three and we can enhance the distance like this and if we deactivate the um, signal node here we can do it like right here so we have only this motion which is just fine and let me see how we can increase the amount of instances we have now from 3 to 10, to 10, to 10. So little towers now, a little tower. I need more distance now. So that's really interesting. And more distance right here. And I have this lovely structure and let's see if Maya can play this back in real time. It sort of does, yeah, it does. It doesn't work with this option, but the whole thing works easily with the instance option. And with this, I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.